All right, now we're going to continue on example three, the latter part of it, uh, and explain uh, how these two, even though they're different equations on appearance, are actually the same once you put them in uh, slope-intercept form. And don't forget, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. All right, so all we did here, we, let's look at this equation. We ended up with y is equal to a negative 3. Excuse me, y minus 3 is equal to a negative x minus 1. First thing they did was they distributed a negative 1. So a negative 1 times x is a negative x. A negative 1 times a positive 1 is a negative 1. All right, so then from there, you want, to, you want the y on this side, like so, and you want the slope and the x term and the b on that side or the y-intercept on that side also so all you're going to do then is you're going to move this um, you're going to move this 3 to the other side so it's a negative 3 so you're going to say plus 3 here plus 3 there draw your line and then add accordingly what's a negative 3 when combined with a positive 3 that's gone so you're left with just y you bring your negative x down there's nothing to add to that and then what's a negative 1 plus 3 a negative 1 plus 3 is a positive 2. And then you come to the other equation and do the same thing. Once again, they distribute the negative 1. So a negative 1 times x is a negative x. A negative 1 times a, excuse me, yeah, a negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1. Once again, a negative 1, there's a 1 there. A negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1. So once again, we want the y by itself. So we got to get rid of that negative 1, and we want the x term along with the slope and the b on the other side. So to do that, we're going to say plus 1 and plus 1. All right, that cancels out, and you're left with y is equal to, bring that negative x down, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So even though both the equations in point-slope form are different because you're using two different points, the equations are actually equal to each other once you put them in slope intercept form. Now one more thing to notice is, notice they are no longer showing you every last step. What used to be a lesson is now a step. Example 4. Solve a multi-step problem. Stickers. You are designing a sticker to advertise your brand. A company charges $225 for the first 1,000 thick stickers and $80 for each additional 1,000 stickers. Write an equation that gives the total cost in dollars of stickers as a function of the number in thousands of stickers ordered. Find the cost of 9,000 stickers. Solution Step 1 Identify the rate of change and a data pair. Let C be the cost in dollars and S be the number of stickers in thousands. Rate of change M slope $80 per 1000 stickers. Data pair S1 stickers C1 costs. So that's going to be 1000 stickers comma $225. Step 2 write an equation using point slope form. Rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form so that the cost is a function of the number of stickers. So, writing the equation in point-slope form, it should look like C minus C1 is equal to M times S minus S1. Substitute 80 for M, that was our rate of change, 1 for S, that's based on 1000, and 225 for C1. And once again, that should be for S sub 1. 1 for S sub 1. That's that value right there. And 225 for C of 1. That's that value right there. And of course, the rate of change for M, the slope. And then you solve for C. Okay, now when solving for C, you're actually putting the equation in Y equals M x plus b form. Once again, notice they're not showing you the steps. 
You should know these steps by now. But to help out those of us who still may be lost, these are your steps. C minus 225 is equal to 80 times S minus 1. So C minus 225 is equal to that 80 is going to be distributed. 80 times S is 80S. 80 times a negative 1 is a negative 80. All right, I want the C by itself. So I got to get rid of this negative 225. So to both sides, I must add a positive 225 and a positive 225. Don't forget, you do the opposite of what you read. All right, now a negative 225, when combined with a positive 225, that's gone. So I'm left with C. So C is equal to 80S. I have nothing to combine that with. There's nothing I like there. So that 80S comes down. Now a negative 80 plus 225 comes out to be 145. So my equation then is C is equal to 80S plus 145. Once again, Y equals MX plus B. That's what we have there. Okay then, so our last step, step 3, find the cost of 9,000 tickets. So C is equal to 80 times 9, remember that's in thousands, plus 145, and that's equal to 865. So the cost of 9,000 tickets is $865. Example 5, write a real world linear model from a table. Working ranch. The table shows the cost of visiting a working ranch for one day and night for different numbers of people. Can the situation be modeled by a linear equation? Explain. If possible, write an equation that gives the cost as a function of the number of people in the group. Here's our table. Number of people, costs in dollars. Four people cost $250. Six people cost $350. Eight costs four fifty, ten, five fifty, twelve, six fifty. Solution Step one Find the rate of change for consecutive data pairs in the table. Alright, so now to find the rate of change, look at what we're doing. We're taking the <clears throat> slope, which is m is equal to what? Y sub two minus y sub one over x of 2 minus x of 1. So for this set of pair, for this pair right here, this becomes my y sub 2. So y sub 2 minus 250. That's what they have right there. 6 minus 4, that's my y, that's my x value, so that's right there. And we repeat the same process all the way through. And notice it come out with 50, 50, 50, and 50. So when I go here, so that says 450 minus 350, now this becomes my y2, and this becomes my, my, my y1. This becomes my x2, and this becomes my x1. When I get here, this becomes my y2, this is my y1, this is my x1, and this is my x2. When I get here, this becomes, this 650 becomes my y2, this becomes my, my, my y1, 12 becomes my x2, and 10 becomes my x1. And notice, my rate of change is the same all the way through, 50, 50, 50, and 50. Because the cost increases at a constant rate of $50 per person, the situation can be modeled by a linear equation. Step 2. Use point slope form to write the equation. Let C be the cost in dollars. Once again, let C be the cost in dollars, and P be the number of people. Use the data pair 4 and 250. So we get C minus C1 is equal to M times P minus P1. That's point slope form. All right, so now our X value is 4. Our Y value is 250. Or the P sub 1 value is 4. And the C sub 1 value is 250. So we substitute 50 for M. 4 for P sub 1 and 250 for C sub 1. And then we solve for C. Once again, we put in C in Y equals MX plus B form. All right, for those of us who may have gotten lost once again from here to here, we're going to break it down for you. But remember, they expect you to know these steps by now. That's why they're not showing you the steps. 
You should have enough practice from your homework and in class to have this step down by heart. But here we go. C minus 250 is equal to 50 times P minus 4. We're going to use our distributive property first. 50 times P is 50P. 50 times a negative 4 is a negative 200. We want to get the C by itself so that negative 250 has to go. So it's a negative 250. So to both sides, we must add a positive 250. When doing so, this cancels. So the C comes down by itself. The 50P, there's no like terms there. So that comes down 50P. A negative 200 plus 250 is 50. So Y equals MX plus B. And from there, we should be finished. This concludes the last example for section, um, what section we in? Section 4.3.